Hi, this is Michael. We're going to take a look at using layer style techniques to make a modern design out of your photograph. Eventually, we're going to end up with something close to the image we have right here. Uh, the six trees blending from one color to the next across the spectrum there. To start with, the image we used, or I used, is the one you see before you now. Uh, bland, boring, uh, not much to it. And so I wanted to do something different with it, and I still really like the shape of the tree. So eventually I cut it out and I went through a bunch of steps and we got back to what I showed you in the beginning here. So we're going to go through this and we're going to cover a couple of important areas. One is using the channel to create a mask. We're also going to look at using the transform again command and then finally coloring the layers using the cover over layer, layer style. So let's begin with the image sort of as it would come out of Lightroom. So you did your adjustments, it's ready to go. You went ahead and cropped it, brought it into Photoshop and you end up here. So what we want to start with is cutting out the tree. I'm going to use channels to do that. I actually tried a lot of different techniques on it. You can go over to your quick select tool and go around and then go to refine mask or select a mask as it's called now. Um, you know, you can use grab uh, your select tool and go down the color range and do it. But the, what I found really works well is going in channels and channels breaks apart everything you see red, green, and blue into their own separate areas. Um, if you're using CMYK or lab, it would also break those apart in that respect. So if you're using a standard RGB image, this is what you're going to see. What you want to look for is the image or channel that uses the highest contrast. You can help make, use that to make a selection. So by clicking on the individual channels, you're going to see what it uh, determines is on that layer via a black and white or gray scale. And as you click through, you can tell that blue has the highest contrast. But we're going to amplify that because we need it to be stark black and white to make this cutout. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate this layer and I can drag it onto the page icon here. And we're going to go ahead and do is go up to Image, Adjustments and Levels or Command L. It's going to bring up our Levels options here. And we need to make it a stronger black and white. So I'm going to go ahead and drag down on the whites, and we're going to increase the brightness of the whites. And I've done this before, so I know I want to get down to about 190 or so. And I want to bring my blacks up. I'm going to bring those in here right around 30. At this point, I have a pretty strong black and white image. What I want to avoid is ending up having something that looks close to black and white but actually has gray in it. If I were to use this image, when I go to do a further technique later on down the road, I'm going to end up causing my um, color overlay to show up on more than just my tree. So it is important that you get this to be strictly black and white. Get it where I want, I hit OK. So now I have this uh, black and white channel right here. I need to now turn this into a mask and use it back on the layer. So to do that, I'm going to hit uh, Command or Control and click on the icon and it goes ahead and selects it. And now I turn back on my RGB and you can see where it's showing you uh, what was on that blue channel overlay and turns it pink. So I want to go ahead and turn that off. Jump to my layers. And I'm going to duplicate my background layer just because I don't like to work on my background. Turn off my background. And we're going to go ahead and add our layer to it. Now right now you can see the marching ants of your outline. And they're all the way around the outside edge. So that's actually showing that you're selecting the non-tree section. You're selecting the sky, as it were. Um, in reality, it doesn't really matter because it's easy enough to switch a mask around, but if you wanted to go ahead and switch this, you could do the inverse. And to do that, we'd go Selection under Inverse, which is Shift-Command-I or Shift-Control-I. And that's going to flip around now that actually the tree is selected. And when you go and add the layer mask, which is down in the bottom of the layers panel, go ahead and it automatically applies the mask since you had the selection active when you clicked on it. You can see by looking at the mask outline, you can see the white part of the tree. So white in a mask is showing through and black is hiding. And we're in pretty good shape here. Um, it did a good job. It does get a little bit translucent. So I like to go ahead and I'm going to double this layer. Once again, you can use Command J for that or Control J. And it goes ahead and overlays an exact copy on it, which makes it uh, a little more solid when you're looking at it. And I want to go ahead and hit Shift and select both those layers, Command E, to merge those together, and now I have a nice solid layer. Now, if we jump back to my final product of the trees here, you'll notice at the bottom of the trees is I do not have um, much of the ground in there. So we're gonna go ahead and remove a little bit of this through another mask, come down here, add a mask, 
to mask things out, you're going to use the brush. You can also use B to hit brush. And go ahead and hit D on your keyboard. And that's going to put in your default colors, which is white in front and black in back. So this is your foreground and your background color. You can switch those by using the little arrows. You can also switch them by using X, which is what I will usually do. And I want to erase. So black is going to erase. So I'm going to hit the X to switch that over. I have my brush. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete out all of the ground in here. Get it down. Just something like that. So I have a little texture in here. If I delete all of it, it makes the tree float in space a little bit too much for my taste. All right, so now we have the tree. It's basically all ready to go. And what I want to do now is start to, when I have to increase my canvas, and then I'm going to multiply out the trees so I get my six trees. There's, uh, as always, multiple ways to do anything in Photoshop. One of the easiest ones is hit your crop tool, or C, drag on the edge. I'm going to hold the Option or Alt key on my keyboard. I'm just going to drag out a ways. Let go. I don't really know how big it needs to be, but um, I'm also going to hit Command or Control-0, which brings me out to the widest width I need to see the entire canvas or entire selection. And that looks pretty good for now. I'm going to hit the check mark, or I could hit Return or Enter to accept those changes. V for my move tool or click on it and go ahead and drag down to the edge line it up where I would like it and there we go so we got that already in place now we're going to work on duplicating the tree so what I want to do is one I need to put this on a new layer as I've said you can bring it down to the page icon but since this layer is already selected I'm just going to hit command or control J and it's going to duplicate it it's much faster than pulling it down every time Go ahead and what we want to do now is hit or use transform and edit, come down, here's free transform, command T, which is what I normally would use. And you want to make sure and use this instead of just dragging it over because we're going to allow it to duplicate. Hold down the shift key as you drag so it doesn't move up or down, it's going to move in a straight line out. And when I did this, I lined it up so that the edge of the tree comes roughly just past the center of the original tree so that I get a nice overlap as I move along. So I want the colors to look like they sort of blend a little bit from one to another. Once I have that done, go ahead and accept those changes. And I'm just going to go ahead and repeat this again. So I go Command J is going to, or Control J, is going to duplicate my layer. And I go Edit. And this time we want to use the Transform Again option, which is Shift Command or Control T and it automatically moves it over. The nice thing is it moved it exactly the same amount as I moved previously. Instead of trying to guess and get a close lineup, I have exactly the same amount of motion sliding over from left to right. Once again, we repeat the process. Command or Control J, Shift Command T to transform again. See how much faster it is than using the menus. And again, Command J, Shift Command or Control T. There's five of them. I did six, so we're gonna do it one more time. All right, now I have all my layers. Now, I ran out of room, I didn't have quite enough. So once again, no problem, hit C, which is for your crop tool, C. Grab on the edge, simply drag out the canvas where you want it. Hit Return or Enter, accept those changes, hit Command-0. Brings us out so we can see everything that's happening. So there's all of our trees all ready to go. So now we wanna add a layer style to start adding our color in. So come on down to the FX, that's your layer style button. Click on that, go to color overlay, select that, and you can see the re results instantly. It's showing you what's gonna happen there. Basically, it's gonna turn whatever is on that layer and it change it to that color, solid color. You can add blending modes or change the color, but it's gonna do everything on that layer, which is why we had to have a good cutout when we did it. So now I don't wanna start with the red, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. I wanna change my hue to 50 change my saturation to 60, change my brightness to 90. And I've got a bright yellow to start me out. Hit OK, and there we go. I've got the first one done. Now I go on to the second one, and we're basically going to do the same thing on each of these. When I select this one, instead of coming down to the FX button though, I'm just going to double click. It brings up the panel. I can click on Color Overlay. Once it's active, I click on the Color Overlay, 
and it brings up my colors. Click inside. Now the nice thing about doing this method is that I can change things by an exact number. I don't have to dial the wheel up and down and then try and select a color and get close. I know exactly where I want to be. So I was at 50 before. I'm just going to increase it by 50 so I have a very smooth transition. I'm going to go up 50 uh, degrees so I'm at a hue of 100. I'm going to leave my saturation and my brightness alone at 60 and 90. I hit OK. So these give me a very exact, exact results when I do it like this. Um, if I was going to try and guess how much to move a tree over, I'd be a little off. So I was going to guess how much uh, color to add, hue to change, I would always be a little bit off here and there. So this makes it a nice smooth event when I do it. Same thing, double click, activate color overlay, click on it, click on your color section, change the value to 150. Next one done. Go to the next one, double click, activate, select your color, 200. Once again, double click, select, click, change colors, 250, hit OK, and the last one. One more time, and ending with 300. All right. You also notice that these little twirl arrows, arrows are on the side and they show you that what effects are on there. They take up a lot of room on your layers. I would often close those. However, you can click directly on this and jump right into your color overlay. Uh, you can also turn off your color overlay. You can turn off all effects. So just know that those are there. The last thing we need to do is add the white background. So I'm gonna go down to my layer zero, which is off. I wanna add a layer above that, down at the bottom here. I wanna fill that all in completely white. You can go down to your gradient tool and if you hold that down, you'll find your paint bucket. And I need to switch my foreground and background color. I can hit X and simply click on the background. Remember, you could also hit Option Delete or Alt Backspace, and that would also fill with your foreground color, which is a nice, fast option. Well, and there you have it. Using a layer style to go ahead and add color to uh, part of your layer or to an entire layer, you could use this with multiple pieces. So if you had a stacked image, you could change each layer to different colors to create different effects depending on what you're using. Uh, one thing to be careful of, I can see if I'm zooming in here, I had just a little bit that was not masked, masked out on the far edge. So this blue tree had a little bit of blue way off in the corner and my pink tree and so on because they're all identical. So that is where that mask is super important and you would just go back and refine that. You could use the eraser tool, you could go start over and do a better mask to begin with, but that's what you need to do to make sure everything is coming out clean when using that color overlay. All right, thanks for watching.